In this video, we're going to show you a few of the new features that we've added to Pro Landscape version 19. Now in version 19, in Image Editor, we've added over a thousand new images to the image library. This takes the image total to over 11,000 images. Now one thing that we have changed in Image Editor is the way that we reorder uh, plants uh, as far as the layering goes. Now, whenever we select a plant, you'll notice that over in the workspace we'll have an object tab here. Now the object tab has the item se selected that we have selected on our project. So you'll see that if I uh, change my selection, uh, it, it selects something else in this listing. Well, what we can do here is we can go in and we can use the move to forward and move to back button and what that does is it, it changes the ordering of that to, to move that plant up or back in the listing. Something new that we've added here is we have the ability now to grab a plant and drag it up or down into position and that will relayer uh, that plant so we can change the ordering very quickly if we're using the object tab over here. Okay, let's go ahead and jump over to Planner and we'll show you a few new things over there. Okay, now in Planner, if you select any text that you've drawn on your project, you now have an up-down arrow on the edit bar with an A next to it, and that will allow you to increase or decrease the font size. Previously, you would have had to went in and put in a numeric value up here for the, the text height, and you had to be very precise about the way you put that in, otherwise you may get a, uh, a text that's either one inch or one foot tall, which is uh, not a good thing because usually we're looking at a quarter inch or an eighth of an inch for text height. We've added several new irrigation tools to Planner. The first one is that we have the ability to take a symbol and add a drip emitter uh, to that symbol. Another thing that we've done is we've added the ability to hide spray patterns when we use the automatic irrigation layout tool so it only shows the heads and does not show where the spray pattern is and where they, the patterns overlap each other. So you do have that option. Also you have the ability to take a sprinkler pipe like what we have here and create a jump where those cross so that it does not appear to be a pipe that comes to a T. So the way we do that is we simply go to the draw menu and down to irrigation and add sprinkler pipe jumps and it will go in and add those jumps very easily. Okay, We also have added a new feature in Planner where if you select a, a paver, uh, actually uh, two pavers here, what we can do is we can join these two pavers uh, even though that one is a rectangle and one is a circle, we can join those together simply by selecting them and right clicking on them and selecting join pavers. And now it's all one paver unit. Okay, another thing that we've added here is the ability to rotate a hatch pattern. So if you right click on a hatch pattern, and this is true with pavers and grass and just about anything with a hatch pattern, you'll go down to rotate pattern and you get this little rotation green triangle. I'm just going to click on it and rotate it and that rotates the entire pattern. Okay, one of the things, uh, one of my favorite things that we've added to uh, Pro Landscape version 19 is the way we do retaining walls. Now, if I select the EasyScape retaining wall tool and I draw in a retaining wall like so, it adds a just a dark uh, black line uh, to represent that retaining wall. Now, if we choose the option up in the edit bar to select fillable and we draw our line, the fillable type has a hatch pattern inside of it to represent the, the mortar lines in between the stones. Most designers, they, they like this format rather than the solid line format like we see here. Well, the problem with the fillable type is if you need to adjust it, you would go into that edit vertice mode by double clicking on it. And you have uh, a lot of different vertice points here where you have to go in and adjust it. And it's not easy to, to make those adjustments. Plus, after you've made the adjustment, the inner hatch pattern here does not follow your adjustment. Okay, so that's the old way of doing things. So what we've done here in version 19 is if I uncheck fillable up in the edit bar, and I go in and I, I draw in a retaining wall using the, the solid line like this, 
what we can do is we can go in and we can edit the vertices points of this line and once we get the curvature of that line down the way we want it to be like so we simply right click on that solid line and go to make retaining wall fillable and it switches it to the other wall type so it's much easier to do those complex wall shapes now okay now let's go ahead and talk about the new features that we've added to the 3d editor I'm gonna go ahead and jump over to a different planner drawing now what we can do in version 19 is we can now take a, a house shell and we can pop it off of the page into our 3d editor and where we can turn it around and where we can actually see uh, the side walls uh, with a roof projected on top of it okay so when we're in planner we need to do a foundation wall and then we'll add a roof to that wall like like we have here okay and once we have those on our project we can go to the tools menu and create 3d file and then I'll just save it okay and what that does is it it brings in my project and it pops that house off the, the page like so so when we turn it around and rotate it we can do that now this one came in a little bit tall so over in the workspace we can go over here and select change house shell height and we can make that a more appropriate height like so we also have other options where we can change the roof color here or we can change the the wall color that's found under the file and 3d editor options okay uh, we can also add doors and windows to this structure uh, it's a little bit tedious to do this if you have a lot of different doors and windows but if you go down to the uh, miscellaneous tab you can go into building material and this is where we have the doors windows would be found under uh, miscellaneous and windows okay and I'll just select a door and drag it up to the project now you'll see here that when I turn that the the door turns just like it was a, a plant and I actually want that to be uh, more like a wall so we go over here to the workspace and select a render type as a wall okay and then we're going to flatten that out like so and then I'm going to squish it down okay now it's not at the right angle to be placed on that wall so what we need to do is we'll come over here to the workspace and I'll select rotate object and I can rotate that so that it's parallel to that foundation wall like so Okay, I'll push it back until it just about disappears and now when I rotate my project around that wall I'm sorry the door uh, does not rotate uh, like the plant materials it's stationary on top of that wall okay also in the 3d editor if we come down we have a new tab the 3d models tab and here you'll see there's a uh, uh, about 200 new uh, models that we've added to the uh, library and we've added a, a lot of models such as the necessaries kits which we can import those and we can scale them down we can rotate those around like so okay we can move them around on our project so uh, that is a, a nice addition to the 3d editor to have those uh, models available to us and those are some of the new features that we've added in version 19. If you go out to our website, you'll see a full list of the uh, new additions to version 19.